Okay, hi, uh, I'm Cheryl. Uh, and I'm gonna give a little bit of a presentation uh, today in this theme, uh, Smart Nation Speaks. Um, okay, so it's quite interesting. So uh, I was introduced to somebody who does what we call futures work. Um, and I think one of the challenges of listening to a futures presentation is there is a tendency for futures practitioners to come, you, come and bombard you with all these bizarre weak signals for the future. Right, so there's like, these are 20,000 cool things that are gonna happen, you know, and then you leave and you kind of think to yourself, oh, that was really cool, and then you go home and you're like, all right, <laughs> you know, that, that wasn't particularly useful. Um, so I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through a little bit of a reflection. You know, it's kind of, we've had a really great day today at this conference, and I think what I would like to um, kind of little talk about for a little bit is to take the tone down a notch and to start to be a little bit more reflective about what we've heard today. So the way that I'm gonna do that is to talk about an object uh, in a smart city, and this object is going to be the traffic light. Um, and I want to use this traffic light to uh, help you think about a number of issues. So one of the issues is really around technology. Uh, so the traffic light as a technological object and the other technologies that's around it, right? So things like the car and so on. And the other part is really about what the traffic light is trying to say, right? We're talking about smart nation speaks. You know, and, and just start to think, is the smart nation having a monologue, a dialogue, or a conversation? Okay, so I hope you kind of bear with me as I take you through some uh, weird and wonderful examples of traffic lights. <laughs> um, but that's, that's what I'm hoping to leave you with, you know, kind of an exploration of uh, what it means when the smart nation speaks. Because we're in the beautiful Art Science Museum, I wanted to start my presentation uh, with a picture of an art installation. Um, and this art installation is called the Traffic Light Tree. And when I saw the image of the traffic light tree, I was like, this is the mother of all traffic lights. You know, it's like glorious, right? It's got 72 different lights and it kind of flashes kind of crazily. Um, the idea of the traffic light tree was that they put it in the middle of a roundabout. Uh, so meaning that it didn't actually have a traffic light type function. <laughs> um, you know, and they put, it in the, uh, they put it initially in Canary Wharf, right? So the idea was that the lights for the traffic light uh, would flash kind of, you know, uh, almost randomly, but the idea is that was supposed to depict um, the, the kind of dynamism of the area, right? So that was the, the intention of this art installation. Of course, when they first put it up, they had a very practical problem. And the problem was that people thought that the traffic light tree was a real traffic light. And then it got rather confusing because, you know, all the lights went off at the same time and it's clearly malfunctioning and clearly slightly schizophrenic. Um, and nobody really knew, knew, you know, so initially people were trying to figure out, you know, what, you know, what, what's this thing, right? Uh, is, it, is it really a traffic light, right? And for us to figure out, you know, if something like this is a traffic light, we should think about what is the function of a traffic light. Um, you know, and you would think about traffic lights as what we call traffic control signals, right? So they do two important things. One is control, so set certain rules uh, or kind of at least operating principles in which the game should be played, uh, and they signal, right? So there's some sort of communication or, uh, you know, kind of aspect to them. Uh, nobody could tell what the traffic light was saying, so clearly, you know, the traffic light tree, I mean, uh, what, what it was saying, and, uh, you know, there was already a roundabout, so it wasn't <laughs> depicting any rules, so it was pretty, uh, there was one way of thinking about, really, what was the, the, the point, you know, uh, of a traffic light, and kind of contrasting that to something which is an art installation. So, on the subject of uh, traffic regulation and rules. Uh, this, is a <laughs> this is a picture from a roundabout in Newton Circus, and I'm, I'm completely petrified of this roundabout. Uh, I hardly drive, but I, I do have a driver's license, and um, every time I've driven uh, on this roundabout, I've gotten, you know, kind of uh, horned. <laughs> like people honk at me, and it's just, uh, <laughs> you know, so. Um, but this is an interesting example of another way that, that we control traffic, right? So the idea is that you have in place a set Rule, set of rules about, that govern behavior. 
So, you know, you can turn left when X, Y, Z happens, you know, so and so has right of way, keep to your lane, you know, that kind of stuff. And you don't actually need this to be intermediate, intermediated by a technological object, right? So, this is one of the ways that, that um, the, the question of how do we improve traffic flow, for example, is answered without the use of technology in a way. Um, and of course, this idea of being governed by rules, has have, you know, in, especially in the area of traffic, um, you know, has been around for a very, very long time, even before cars. Right? So even the days of Julius Caesar, you know, where the problem was not traffic, uh, car congestion, but chariot congestion, um, then what they would do is then they would say, okay, there are, there are now rules governing where you can go. Right? And one of them is, uh, you can't go into the center of the city, sorry. You know? So rules are another way of, um, you know, how to, to kind of govern, you know, or, or trying to put in these, these parameters for, for behavior. I love this picture. It just makes me so happy. <laughs> but, but another way is people tell you what to do, right? So another way of governing traffic is to put some fella there, uh, and then the fella tells you where to go, la, right? So go straight, go left, go right, stop, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, you get spin-offs of kind of funny behavior, right? So one of the, the kind of funny spin-offs is that you get these dancing traffic policemen in Manila, right? And it then comes Christmas, and then now the traffic policeman is Santa Claus, right? And then you get the problem of, um, yes, you have a human uh, trying to perform this traffic control function, but how do you know he has authority? Uh, you know, because <laughs> it's a guy in a Santa outfit in the middle of the road. It's kind of bizarre, you know? Um, so again, you know, it's, it's got these issues uh, around why people go towards technological solutions. Obviously, you know, you just imagine the number of intersections in Singapore, for example, if you had to deploy traffic cops everywhere, you know, it would just be totally bonkers, right? So that's why, again, uh, people move towards these technological solutions. So this brings us to um, kind of, in some sense, the, the enthusiasm towards technology, right? Um, in South Africa, it was pretty cute because when traffic lights first came on, uh, you know, and they started to be more and more widely used, they started to call them robots because they thought they were, I mean, they, they would consider them kind of as robot policemen, uh, you know? But the idea of a technological solution um, is also a way to, what we call embed rules, right? Uh, one of the speakers earlier this morning made this comment and said, um, you know, if, if technology is the answer, but what, what was the question, right? And in this case, you know, in this uh, situation, you know, one of the questions was really this idea of, again, traffic flow, how do we manage where people are going? And they thought, okay, what we'll do is we'll now put in a thing, right? And the thing will regulate traffic. In the beginning, of course, they, it wasn't automated, so they needed an operator. Uh, uh, to do that, and in fact, the very first traffic light um, exploded and then injured the guy who was operating it. Uh, you know, so I mean, there are also de you know, kind of downsides to these, these kind of technological solutions. Now I want to talk a little bit about what is the traffic light trying to say? Now that we've got this technology, what is it, what is it trying to say to us, right? Um, and I would argue, you know, I've spent the last couple of days looking at pictures of traffic lights, it's pretty funny. Uh, but, you know, I would argue that the traffic lights are kind of bossy, right? Like, you know, you're minding your own business, it's like, don't walk, stop, you know, go. You know, you're like, whoa, <laughs> I'm just minding my own business, you know? Um, so there's, it's a little bit of a command and control kind of idea, right? You know, that it's, it's very clear about what it's got, it wants you to know, it's very clear about what it's saying, and there is no real room for deviation, right? Um, this is gonna be a, a kind of funny side note, but so in the doing the reading for this, uh, you know, kind of doing a little bit of uh, research, and by research I mean Googling, <laughs> for <laughs> traffic lights. So, you know, I did what everybody should do. You, you do a talk, right? The first thing you do is just Google the title of your talk or whatever, and then see what funny things come out, right? Um, so one of the funny snippets of information, like kind of uh, funny, funny stories that came out of, uh, you know, this was, that, you know, there was this 1969 uh, movie, um, The Italian Job, 
right? And the whole point of the movie was basically, uh, one of the, the stories of the movie, the part of the movie was around um, the lead character played by Michael Caine who plans a heist. Um, and he does that by controlling, you know, the traffic lights, right? And this is really funny, well, I think really funny quote. So there's one scene in the movie where he basically tells his team, this is a very difficult job, and the only way to do it is that we all work together as a team. And that means you do everything I say, right? Um, and that's basically what the traffic light is telling everybody, right? We are in a very complicated traffic situation. There are trucks and bikes and all these people doing all these things. It is very crucial that we all work together and the only way we're gonna do this if you all listen to me, right? So it's a very interesting kind of command and control kind of system. But then of course, you know, <laughs> humans, <laughs> humans are bugs in the system, right? As we were saying earlier. You know, and they, they, you know, God forbid they ever followed rules, right? Um, so the other interesting thing to think about when you're thinking about Smart Nation Speaks is are the people listening, right? And are they kind of, you know, complying and so on, right? Um, you know, and one of the first things you, <laughs> you, you have to figure out when you learn to drive, for example, is how fast you can go when the light changes yellow, <laughs> you know, to beat the red, right? You know, and, it's, and, 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 and people find these workarounds around the, you know, the, the rules, you know? So just because the traffic light um, or the smart nation is speaking clearly, it doesn't mean that people are listening and it definitely doesn't mean that people are following instructions. So you get, unfortunately, a lot of really funny um, unintended consequences. Okay, truth be told, the stomp picture has nothing to do with what I'm about to say, but it's just really funny because it's upside down anyway. So, <laughs> um, but the idea was that one of the unintended consequences is that people run red lights all the time. Right? And the, because they run red lights, actually, the incidence of personal injury um, you know, at traffic intersections is actually pretty high. You know, um, about 40 to 50% of personal injury happens at traffic intersections. You know, so there are a lot of these negative consequences as well. Um, and there was another interesting study, which is why I put this photo up, um, that actually, if people get used to the traffic lights and start to you know, not obey them or whatever it is, actually changing back to old school stop sign actually reduces the, the incidence of uh, accidents pretty substantially by about 20%, which is not insignificant. And so you start to get into these questions of not only um, around safety, but also about perceptions of safety. You know, we talked, we had a lot of, we've been talking a lot about autonomous vehicles and so on, um, but it's not just about the ideas of, of um, that you're you know, being safer on the roads. It's also about whether you perceive that you're safer and whether that perception, rightly or wrongly, changes your behavior. You know? So if you feel that you're, oops, if you feel that you're safer because you think everybody else is following the traffic rules, actually, <laughs> you know, that, that, might not be, that might not be the case, right? So I think the other part which is really interesting is really the idea of, you know, first you talked about, we talked about the smart nation speaking, or traffic light speaking as a monologue. Now let's try to think about it as a dialogue, right? So the traffic light talks to me and shouts pretty loudly, frankly. Can I talk to the traffic light? Uh, and for the most part, your main interface with talking to the traffic light is to press the damn button. And if you're like me and fairly impatient kind of person, what happens is you get to an intersection, you know, and then you go, depending on how, you know, how busy you are and how, you know, important you feel your day is and so on, you know, so it's like, no need to press so many times, press until shock, you know, <laughs> you know, you go a little bit mad, right, kind of pressing this thing. And cognitively, you know that the more times you press it actually doesn't really seem to make much of a difference, you know, but nevertheless, this illusion of control is rather important to you because it's your only feedback mechanism to the damn traffic light. So off you go on your little kind of, you know, and somebody else comes who's also busy who goes and presses the thing, you know, and, and then the traffic light, frankly, doesn't really listen to you, and it just kind of changes whenever it wants, you know? And then kind of life continues, right? Um, I, I mean, I think that that's a pretty interesting uh, dynamic, you know, this kind of one-way communication. You know, but what would it start to look like if the traffic lights actually started to listen? 
I love this example, and every time I see it like around Singapore, I just you know kind of want to hug it. But <laughs> um, you know, but one of the one of the really great examples you see in Singapore is this idea or this this kind of feature of the traffic light actually listening to you, you know, and acting in a way that is in your interest, right? So this particular, for those of you who are not from here, um, what we have is uh, these kind of elderly friendly traffic lights. So in certain areas around Singapore, um, you know, it started out as a little bit of a pilot project which is kind of slowly expanding across the island, but the idea is that um, there is a little sensor and the senior citizen or somebody with a disability can tap their EasyLink card, because you know it's like pioneer generation, you know, they've got a senior citizen pass, right? So they can tap the card, and then what happens is that it, it will then change the countdown um, to a little bit longer so the person can take, a, you know, have that little bit longer to uh, cross the street, you know. Um, and so for me, that's something that is really quite interesting, right, because now you start to see an interaction, right, you start to see a responsiveness of the city to needs that are, are pressing and very real and very tangible, right. I think the other part which is interesting is really, you know, we've been talking about traffic lights as standalones, um, and earlier in the, co the, the conference, we talked a lot about traffic lights as you know, systems or like smart nation as systems. I'm not going to focus a lot on that because you know, traffic lights talking to each other is obviously another way of optimizing in a smart nation context. But I do want to talk about um, smart nation facilitating conversations. Right? So if I've moved from a monologue to a dialogue, now can I start to see something like a traffic light as a, as a facilitator, right? a way of, of kind of helping other, you know, have, help me connect to something else. And in this example, like this is an example in uh, Germany. So, I mean, it was, it was a fun little experiment, right? But basically what they did was they installed a little ping pong game. You know, one of the kind of most irritating things about traffic lights is that you have to wait for them, right? You have to wait for the light to change. So, you know, you're standing there and you're standing somewody else and the are standing at you and you're staring at them and you're just like, come on, you know? So what they did was they put a little ping pong uh, game you know, and the idea was like, now I can play ping pong, right? So I'm waiting for 30 seconds, so I'm like, hit to you, you hit to me, you know, I hit to you, you hit to me, you hit to me, you know, and hey, you know, 20, 20 seconds has gone by and we can now cross the road, high five each other across the street and we're good, right? And I think that that's a really interesting uh, use application of how something like, you know, viewed as very kind of command and control, um, you know, but viewed as now a facilitator, right, or something that can actually start to bring people together, bring conversations together. And because, you know, I do futures, right? So I have to like put some picture of like a futures thing. So this is my picture of the futures thing. <laughs> um, and, you know, and one of the, and we talk a little bit about this idea of visions of the future, right? And, uh, and how they look like, how they evolve and so on. When I look at something like this, there are a couple of things that kind of jump out at me. Um, and of course, this is from my minority report. Um, but there are a few things that jump out at me. The first one is that there are no traffic lights. So somehow they find, found a way to kind of signal traffic control. The second one is that they're all autonomous vehicles. The third one is that traffic does not seem to have gotten any better. Uh, in fact, there's a, you know, in transportation, there's this thing we call induced demand, right? We tend to, we have got this lovely phrase in infrastructure where we say, build it and they will come. True enough, if you build it, they will come and then the congestion continues, right? So it doesn't actually solve <laughs> your problems of flow and so on. And then the last one, which is kind of uh, uh, interesting, is that they are all uh, acting en masse, right? So when you, you, know, you watch this scene, you know, you've got get this kind of swarm kind of mentality. Um, and you know, in, in listening to some of the earlier speakers, um, one of the things that struck me was the idea that actually even as we are looking for more efficiency in the system, actually imperfection in the system is also important, right? Because, um, you know, and, and one of the early speakers was talking about this ethic, ethical dilemma, you know, is the, the you know, classic trolley uh, kind of dilemma, you know, do you hit the old person or do you hit the baby, you know, that kind of, that kind of thing, right? And we're just like, really, do I have to choose? No, and do you have to choose, that's one thing, but the second thing is, do I have to choose on a systems level that means I'm saying systematically I want to hit the baby? I mean, you know, <laughs> there's some pretty serious uh, implications around that, right?
You know, so this particular, I put in this particular slide because again, you know, it's, it's kind of looking at the evolution of the traffic light um, to, kind, to kind of the point where it is uh, kind of going into obsolescence, right? And this particular example is of a MIT Sensible City Lab project called Drive Wave. And what they've done here is that they've replaced the traffic light with what, with, with what they've called intelligent intersections. So the idea, again, is, you know, if the question was improve traffic flow, how do we improve traffic flow, then the answer is not necessarily traffic lights, right? It could be something else. You know, and replacing the idea of a robot policeman or something with a digital controller, right? The ability to just, um, and, and this is not in video, but if you, you, you look at the vid video for this, you know, you basically see smooth traffic, right? You know, that they will regulate the, the intersection or the knitting between the intersection um, based on speed rather than this kind of stop, wait 30 seconds, go kind of, kind of model. Um, and as you can see a little bit from the, uh, from the, the, the graphs that are there, you know, the idea of it improving not only throughput, but also improving the, the environmental outcomes, right? Because you don't get this kind of energy intensive kind of starting, stopping, uh, waiting at intersections and so on. Um, I put this in not to suggest at all that this is a silver bullet for all our traffic problems, but just to make the point that sometimes we have a very techno-optimist view of the future. Right? And we tend to think that, oh, there will be this big shiny thing that will be awesome, and then you know, the big shiny thing will be there forever. Right? And actually, that's not really true. Um, because what you get is you know, things like the Museum of Traffic Control, right? where this hobbyist um, in the US has basically gone and collected all these you know, kind of obsolete traffic signs and traffic you know, kind of uh, objects, you know, traffic control signals, um, and put them in a little museum. Right, you know, and and at some point, and and you know, in in the future space, we call this. Sometimes we go to work, what we call a used future, right? A future that is kind of you know is is past its its time, right? And even for us, looking at something that's very forward looking, we we do also have to think kind of more critically about which part of this is actually going to be pretty obsolete pretty fast, you know, and what are the things that at the end of the day will still remain, right? Uh, this is my last slide, and I'm going to use this uh, little slide to segue into the next speaker, actually. Um, so one of the things that uh, Tong Yi does uh, is lead trails you know, around Singapore. You know, and the objective of some of these trails are basically to you know, uncover and have discussions around social issues in Singapore. One of the things I'm hoping to leave you with today is in this little trail around traffic lights, that you can actually go back into the city and start to really think critically about what's happening in the city, right? It's, I personally feel that it's not necessarily about, oh, you know, it's all this great R&D and all that kind of stuff, but also being in tune to what is happening on a day-to-day -day level, right? So even if it is, you know, if I go and see, look at a lamppost, if I look at a fire hydrant, is it talking to me? Is it saying stuff? Can I communicate with it? Is it communicating to other you know, fire hydrants, lampposts, traffic lights, etc. You know, what is it really saying? Who gets to decide what it says, right? Is it having a monologue, standing there kind of just blasting information? Is it having a dialogue with me? Or is it actually something that is creating an inclusive and open conversation? You know, and I think that these are uh, questions I would like to leave with you. Um, and with that, I thank you very much for your attention.